So you more than likely have a Pinterest board that you love. You see all the flowers, all the components and colors, but where it gets tricky is picking everything out and putting it together. So the question is, what makes a good floral design? And I'm going to break it down into four simple components, and I'm going to pair it with an analogy of something that you do every single day and you probably don't even think about it. So the four components are greenery, volume flowers, accent flowers and texture. And so the analogy that I'm going to pair it with is getting dressed, which is something that you do hopefully every single day. So let's start with greenery. That is the foundational element. And so every time I start a design, the first question I ask myself is what greenery am I going to use? And so I'll look through her inspiration pictures and I'll notice if she's drawn to darker greens or if she likes more sagier things like eucalyptus or olive branch and how that applies back to the analogy is after you get out of the shower what do you do you put your underwear on for a night out you may put on Spanx a supportive bra so it's a foundational element that supports everything else the next thing that you do is you put on your clothes and that would be the volume flowers so that's something that's not extremely expensive it sets the tone of the palette of the color palette and it covers a lot of surface area so we think of volume flowers as hydrangea, roses, carnations, alstroemeria, stock. So again, it's something that um, covers surface area, not extremely pricey. So after we get dressed, what do we do? We typically will put on some jewelry and that would be accent flowers. So accent flowers would be ranunculus, anemones, garden roses, peonies. It's those pricier little blooms that um, you don't need a lot of. So jewelry, smaller, more expensive, but you don't need a ton of it. And lastly is texture. So if you think about everything that I just talked about, you probably, you have things like carnations, roses, spray roses, ranunculus, garden roses, peonies, those are very heavily petaled flowers. And what happens is when you get them in, in concentration, it becomes visually flat because there's no texture to break up all of those blooms. And so that's why I like to introduce texture into my designs. So texture would be something like thistle, berries, um, even like a wispy greenery, like a gonus, uh, what else? Estrancha, Queen Anne's Lace, Scabiosa, those are very like small petally items, um, things that would break up those larger blooms. And the reason for that is it would give your arrangement more depth and visual interest. So going back to our outfit analogy, we've got on our jewelry, we got our clothes on, and what do we do? We start adding a belt, we add a scarf, because we have all this fabric, we wanna break it up in some way and make it more visually interesting. So those are the four simple components that you can use to approach floral design. So it's not super hard, it's not super heady. So let's, let's um, talk about them again or just recap. Greenery, volume flowers, accent flowers, and texture. And I feel like floral design overall is taste inclusive. So there's no hard rules. So if you don't want to use greenery, don't do it. If you just want large bouquets of hydrangea because that's what you love, then absolutely go for it. But hopefully this will help make sense of just putting it all together. And if you have like more questions or want to see it in, ac in action, you can email us or take a look at our mood boards and our packages because we've made our pa packages with those four components in mind. And if you, this is just overwhelming to you and you want us to do it, then feel free to get a custom design and we'll look through your inspiration pictures, build out a recipe and build out your cart. So I hope this helps and we'll see you next time.